I'm absolutely delighted now to introduce our second keynote speaker of the day. Um, looking incredibly glamorous, I must say. You'll all see in a second. Uh, Tracy Braben was previously an actor before she entered politics. She was Shadow Secretary of State for Digital, Culture, Media and Sports and Shadow Minister for the Cultural Industries. And of course, now she is the Mayor of West Yorkshire. Um, if we have time for some audience questions after the keynote, I will try to put those through. So please do submit those via Slido. Um, but in the meantime, please give a very warm welcome to Tracy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And thank you for your patience. I'm keeping you from your lunch. Um, just very quickly, I'll do an audio description of myself. I'm five foot four. I have shoulder length um, fair hair. I'm wearing a cream jumpsuit. Um, hopefully that will be enough. I'm also about to wear glasses. Um, so thank you so much for the invitation to speak to you all today. And it is official that, uh, that conferences with the creative people are where the beautiful people are. Um, because you definitely understand uh, the power of culture. And uh, certainly you are th some of the most exciting people I get to meet. So thank you all uh, for coming. So... Um, it's really important uh, that we all understand, and I know that you do, that culture is not just a nice to have, is it? It is the way we boost our economy, it's the way we create jobs and skills, regeneration, better well being, and underscores our soft power in the world. And for me, it's really personal. I grew up um, on a council estate in Batley, free school meals kid always wanted to be an actor and with no money and, and no contacts. I just didn't know where I'd get started. And I had a teacher at my school who told me about um, a, a free youth drama club where, and this will divide the audience about who knows who this person is, where Billy Whitelaw used to go. And uh, I, I was hugely excited. My dad had a job at the time and he had a car so he could take me. And it was transformational. Um, sadly, my dad then lost his job, um, but, and I couldn't go anymore, but I'd really tasted the Kool-Aid, and it was fantastic, and there was no looking back. Um, three decades later, having traveled the world as an actor and a writer, meeting and working with extraordinary people, I campaigned with Joe Cox, who was standing in Batley as the candidate. Um, um, I campaigned during her election, and again, to save our local libraries. And then after her tragic murder, I understood what I had to do and I stepped up to serve. And it's been a huge privilege and an honor to be a politician representing my region and my community for the last seven years. And I have taken that passion for culture and the understanding of the power of culture with me into everything that I've done. And uh, as was said, I was able in five years um, to um, rise to the heady levels of Shadow Secretary of State for DCMS and also as the Shadow Minister for Culture. And then going into the combined authority, I realized that culture was nowhere to be seen. So I was able to establish a heritage, culture, and sport committee made up of industry leaders and with a nice healthy budget of 11 million pounds and started to put culture at the heart of everything that we did in West Yorkshire. Building a dedicated policy function from the ground up, supporting our year-long festivals, Leeds 2023, Kirkley's Year of Music, Culturedale, Wakefield 2024, and then on to the mighty Bradford City of Culture. Uh, whoop, whoop, for all those Bradfordians. Um, establishing the Mayor's Screen Diversity Programme, giving working class kids and diverse kids a chance to get in and get on in the creative industries. We've also established West Yorkshire's first ever Young Poet Laureate programme with the amazing, extraordinary Simon Armitage. And a month ago, it was World Poetry Day, and honestly, it was the best day of my job, listening to young people speaking about their poems and creativity. And it was delivered in partnership with the amazing National Literacy Trust and has reached 
43,000 pupils in primary and secondary schools, giving them an opportunity to, to develop those skills, the oracy, the confidence, um, and the imagination. And soon we will be appointing West Yorkshire's first ever, two of them, uh, primary and secondary, young poet laureates. And we will be commissioning them to write poems on moments of importance in the region. But what really struck me was that teachers were telling me that they were desperate for these sorts of initiatives with off-the-shelf resources that could help those pupils that need those all-important creative skills to speak confidently and express their innermost thoughts in a captivating and imaginative way, to look at the world differently and take leaps into the unknown, those valuable transferable skills regardless of what job you end up doing. We all know if you're an aspiring engineer inventing the tech to enable us to battle climate emergency, you're going to need communication skills to get your ideas across. We all know it is STEAM, not STEM. And arts education complements so many other subjects like, like maths and like, and like science. And I'm pleased to see that a labour creative curriculum would take a holistic 360 view where art, music, poetry, dance, drama aren't only available to those at fee paying schools, but available to everybody. Because whatever somebody says, it's not all about maths, is it? We know, we know it's about a skills shortage in the creative industries and the evidence is there. And we have talent that has been overlooked for far too long. Those who do want a career in the creative industries need those opportunities. And all too often, I speak to youngsters who say they have the passion, they have the ideas, but they just don't see themselves reflected in the sector. They don't know anyone with a job like that. And I absolutely get it. I know what it's like to have people sneer at your accent. And I know what it's like to, for people to think you're not very clever or creative because you're not RP or you haven't been to the right school. And I absolutely know how hard it is as a freelancer making ends meet and how tough it was when my own kids had to go on free school meals because life was so hard for me and my creative partner. And that's why representation really matters. If you can't see it, you can't be it. And just as an aside, as the only woman Metro Mayor in the country, if there's any women in this audience who want to step up into politics, I'll have a chat with you. Absolutely. We need more women in political life. Now, I mentioned the Mayor's Screen Diversity Programme earlier, but if we just drill down into the data, we can see the impact of this sort of intervention. Five times oversubscribed. 62% uh, women or non-binary, 43% identifying as disabled, 38 from a, a black Asian minority ethnic background, and 50% of that cohort ending up with a job in screen industry or further training. I can, as the mayor, set targets and working with Screen Yorkshire, deliver life-changing opportunities but we all know one intervention is not going to solve the inequality and diversity challenges that face us. We need to do more. And in order for us to do more, we need further, deeper, wider devolution. And I've long called for devolution of the career service, uh, devolved to a local regional level so we can be agile and we can deliver the tailored approach to help local people find opportunities that are right for them. And reading in the report that our, our very own queen of Bradford Literature Festival, uh, Saima Aslam, really struggling to recruit venue managers, stage managers, this just reinforces exactly what we're saying. Now, I can do a lot through um, the adult education budget. It's been devolved with £65 million and our Skills Connect programme. But further reform would enable us to tackle opportunity gaps head on. So while we have a free apprenticeship levy scheme with uh, unspent um, uh, funds, ASDA, for example, going to upskill 10 early years workers. It's a brilliant scheme, but does it work for the creative industries? And I, I was pleased to see um, that the Labour Party were looking uh, in their manifesto going forward to how they would be able to split it up, allowing creative businesses to spend half their levy on shorter courses, modular skills training, and to have that flexibility needed in tough recruitment challenges and in the time that businesses are facing a really tough um, recruitment. So as an MP also, 
and an ex-freelancer, I knew how COVID would impact the creative industries and co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group for the excluded, I campaigned to widen eligibility for more freelancers to get financial support from government. But we still see the impact from that close down two years later. So in West Yorkshire, we're making changes to launch tailored support for micro businesses and freelancers in the creative industries who too often fall out of existing schemes. And as more devolution deals are announced, we can work across borders, create a northern corridor of creative excellence. And I've been working closely with Andy Haldane and the Royal Society of the Arts uh, to convene major players across the north to focus on the opportunity create, to create a northern creative corridor to enhance and amplify the brilliant work already underway, speaking with a collective voice representing areas like mine and the extraordinary cultural strengths and ambitions that have been undervalued for too long. A, a creative crucible, if you like. And as I said at the beginning, it isn't just because it's a nice to have, just because it's an interest of mine. It is because it's about the economy and the economy of the North. Now, the creative industries are worth over two billion pounds of GVA to our regional economy. In West Yorkshire, we have the fastest growing creative sector outside of London. We have 50,000 people employed in the sector, more graduates in art subjects than any other city outside of London, 9,000 studying design and creative and creative and performing arts, 2,300 studying media, journalism, creative writing and communications, all supported by a strong research ecosystem, bringing together the brightest minds at our seven universities and creative businesses. Channel 4, Rolam, Duck Soup, True North, ITV Sky, XR Games, Production Park in Wakefield, the largest cluster of live events businesses in Europe, home to the £7 million Explore facility, providing us with an industry-leading research and innovation centre for entertainment, tech and production. It's an ex-mining village that has the likes of Beyonce and Lady Gaga coming to the local corner shop. Well, not quite, but uh, it, the, the power of regeneration of that facility is off the scale. XR Stories, led by the University of York, working collaboratively with where we are now, the BFI, Screen Yorkshire and a host of universities, supporting research, development and innovation in immersive and interactive storytelling. And the world of fashion, we have the Future Fashion Factory Cluster, led by the University of Leeds, working with the likes of, I'd like to say, local company Burberry and British Fashion Council as the region's fashion and textile research and innovation cluster. An estimated 10,000 people are employed by our region's textile design and manufacturing. Investing in innovation, we can build on our rich history of textile excellence. And with our three years of cultural festivals rolling into the mighty Bradford, we are unstoppable. And the continuous flow of investment and ideas that will be the rocket fuel for creatives in our region. And just imagine, you're an intern in Leeds 2023, and then you are a producer going into Wakefield's 2024. And then you are a, a strand or a programme developer at Bradford City of Culture. And then you get a job at Channel 4. I mean, who needs to move to London to have an amazing creative uh, career that's well paid with lots and lots of interesting opportunities? But we're not just putting on a great show in West Yorkshire. We're also putting together a case backed by evidence to show that fundamentally and very clearly investment in culture works. Culture levels up. It drives growth. But of course you need proof. So we're establishing evaluation frameworks, working with the Centre for Cultural Value at the University of Leeds. We have the pioneering born in Bradford that followed 30,000 babies. They're now teenagers uh, to investigate their lives, the impact on all sorts of things like COVID, tech, and we are working with them to evidence that culture levels up. That's why evidence-based policy advice provided by the likes of PEC is more important than ever as we navigate an uncertain world and a world transformed by AI. And I'm sure you were as blown away as I was 
to see that extraordinary photograph that won all the prizes and to hear music that sounds exactly like the musicians that it mimics, we have to get on the front foot to ensure that regulation and accountability is there to help our creatives control their copyright and also are able to make a living from the art that they create. And we have to lean in though as well to this disruption because we operate in a global economy of commerce, ideas and innovation. Uh, now, British creative industries are a global success story with exports all over the world, and we need to take the lead on this if we're going to retain that status. And no one can say exactly what a creative job is going to look like in the future. But if one thing that we can do is we can make that future be more equitable and not further disenfranchise communities who've been left out for far too long. So I'm really looking forward to working with the Creative PEC at their new home at Newcastle University to offer to be an early adopter, to be the sandbox where we can, we can test ideas and pilot um, good schemes. And certainly in West Yorkshire, we are absolutely ready to blow, uh, blow away any assumption that the North doesn't have a creative life and creative businesses. And finally, an advert. Because this weekend, we've got an amazing event happening in West Yorkshire. And I, I'm assuming most of you will know the mighty Jude Kelly, who uh, has run for many years Women of the World Festivals here on the South Bank. Well, she is cu she's curating a project I'm supporting um, called The Wow Barn. And if anybody's seen the film um, a Witness, you'll remember in the middle of the film, there is a barn raising. The Amish community raise a barn. We are raising a barn in 24 hours on Cinder Moor in Leeds. And um, uh, 300 uh, female and non-binary construction industry professionals and volunteers are coming together to raise that barn in a day. And it's going to be a venue for two weeks. Um, and embedded into this was the comprehensive skills program in carpentry, in construction, events management, programming, which I really hope is going to create a new career path for all women and girls in West Yorkshire. So it's been an absolute delight to come and speak to you today. It's been a long morning. I'm sure, I'm sure you're feeling ready um, for lunch. But um, thank you so much for the invitation to speak to you. And you will all be welcome to come to West Yorkshire. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tracy. Can I, are these mics on? Yes, I think they are. Thank you, and we are lucky enough to have a couple of minutes um, before lunch, so we can ask a few more questions, but thank you very much for that keynote. Um, I mean, one of the, one of the reasons for doing uh, this, this conference now is looking back, and looking back, you know, we, we sort of had a bit of a, a joke earlier about the, the birth of the Cool Britannia era when, when you know, the term creative industries was coined. Um, but it struck me listening to you and thinking about you as someone who was in the creative industries for the entirety of your career before you moved into politics. Coming out of that creative industries bubble and into that political world, what struck you about the level of understanding about the creative industries in, with politicians and policy makers? Well, one of the things I noticed um, five years when I was uh, a politician in, in Westminster is how, how the churn of ministers in DCMS um, it was like people didn't want the job or it was a stepping stone to something better. It's the, the best job <laughs> in government. Why would not people not be clamoring to get that job? Because, as I said, it's about regeneration, skills and jobs and well-being. And we're talking about the strain, for example, on the NHS with mental health challenges and ill health. Creative social prescribing, we're investing half a million pounds in that in West Yorkshire. It not only helps communities, individuals, but it keeps creatives employed and on salary and earning money so that they can stay in the sector. I, I just never understood how it was seen as something that was just the, the fun department. It really isn't. It's one of the most substantial, exciting roles in government. And I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that, that politicians saw that. However, I am heartened um, by the fact that the government have 
um, identified as the creative sector, creative industries, as a mission and as one of the pillars um, for deliverables. So when we're looking at investment zones, when we're looking at trailblazer deals, I'm heartened that the government are happy to have those conversations. And th I, you know, I would say that the, the ministers that I've spoken to all are very, you know, uh, they, they speak with the right attitude, they want to make a difference, but I do feel that it's not seen in the same seniority as some of other ministerial posts. I absolutely loved doing it. It was such a short period of time, but um, it, it's a job where you can make a massive difference. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And, um, I mean, devolution and, 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 and how you decentralise power, mm -hmm. and particularly in the creative industries, is, is something that you, you know about. And we've had a couple of questions that have come in about that. So what in policy terms does cultural devolution mean to you? Um, well, it's always about power and money, isn't it? Um, it's also about soft power, about the people that you can bring into the room. But the Arts Council, I think, have done a fantastic job. I think they've been under siege for many years. Um, I think uh, their representatives in West Yorkshire are very attuned to what is going on in our sectors, and they do a great job. However, I also think there is space for uh, a greater devolution of resources to... Um, to leaders who know their region and uh, who can work together with Arts Council to understand, for example, the skills we need working on programmes together. And I know that the Trailblazer deals, why, whilst it's not explicit about taking the powers from Arts Council, I think there is a sense that, that local leaders could then uh, have a, a, a greater voice in the choices about where money goes into which sectors and so on. Um, and also understanding the, the creative industry business side of it, being able to merge um, investment in business with the creative industries and support for organisations and buildings. And we all know, don't we, that um, during COVID, the mayors, I wasn't a mayor at the time, but the mayors of Greater Manchester and Liverpool were able to immediately identify chunks of money for freelancers. And the Arts Council was protecting buildings and, and organisations and freelancers to some degree, but locally, uh, directly elected mayors were able to understand what was needed on the ground. So whilst I'm not going to develop policy um, here and now because we're having those conversations with uh, uh, government and, and the civil servants at the moment, but I think the Arts Council have done a really good job. However, we also know our communities so we can be more helpful. Final question. And um, I know you're very happy in your job, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not implying that you want the prime ministerial job, but it's the oh, question I asked my previous panellists, so I will ask you the same thing. If you were the prime minister tomorrow, what policy change would you immediately make to support the UK's creative industries? Well, surely it's got to be about bringing the creative um, subjects back into school. Surely that's the one thing that a new prime minister would and should do. I think that message has been ringing out loud and clear with this audience, so I'm not surprised you got a warm reception for that. Thank you so very much, Tracy. We're absolutely delighted that you could have joined us today. A round of applause, please. Thank you all so much.